Stu, it's about six months until the uh, the Olympics kicks off. Uh, how's the preparation been? Yeah, it's been good. As I say, we've received all the uh, feedback in regard to the letters we put out. Obviously, uh, the vast, vast majority of players all in favour of it, as we fully expected. It'll be exciting for them. Now it's down to me to see as many of those players on the form and fitness over the next couple of months leading into the uh, end of the season. And then um, whittling that list down a little bit in, uh, in mid-March, if we possibly can. And then from there, the draw on the 24th of April, which will be very exciting. Have you had much contact with the other managers and other under-21s managers about players who you should be looking at, who you should be considering? Not at this stage. As I say, once I probably, you know, if I ended up, I'd probably see it a little bit unfair ringing, you know, a nation about a certain individual, if you like, when I've got 180-odd players on a list, you know. So for me to, at this stage, maybe get that down to a more manageable level and speak to certain individuals about players that I don't know so much, obviously. I know a lot of people in the game and obviously speak with them about certain individuals that I don't know so well. Um, obviously the vast majority of players that, that I would know, you know, they're playing on these shores, um, so I'll know them quite well. And obviously I've travelled up uh, to Scotland and, and Wales in regard to, to my job as, a, as an under-21 manager. And names such as Ryan Giggs and David Beckham have been touted in, in this number of players that you've named. Mm -hmm. How hard is that going to be to pick those three over 23-year-old players? Is that going to be the, the toughest decision for you? Well, we spoke about that and probably the best way forward, uh, as I see it, is, is concentrate on the ones that are under the age group, to be honest with you. Put them into a team formation and a squad formation and then on top of that find out where you're weak outside that and then the three players that are going to be over-age players will probably come and supplement those areas within the team that you're a little bit weak. And the squad, it's a small squad by tournament standards, 18 players. And Have you, you decided what that 18 is going to be made up of in terms of positions? Um, no, the one thing that, that we've probably looked at at this stage, you near enough have to view it in a, in a strange way by picking your team first. Right. And then outside your team, you fill in, right, what talent have we got? What options do we need up front, out wide? in the defence, whatever. So probably, you know, sometimes you're picking a big squad, you tend to just pick the squad. I think sometimes when your squad is that much, that sort of uh, narrowed down, you end up sitting there and thinking, what would be my team? You pick the team and then work back from there to your squad. Was it difficult for you reading comments by other athletes like Di Green who said that football as a sport doesn't have a place in, in the Olympics? Mm. Is that quite hard for you to, to read and, and take on board? Um, it's like everything, really. I mean, everyone will have certain different opinions of, of football being involved in football. Some will support it very well, some won't. I remember when basketball first came into the Olympics in the 80s, you know, support was polarised. Yeah, brilliant that we got some real top stars from, from the States coming over. Others turned around and said, well, this isn't in the Olympic ideal, you know. Um, it's a difficult one. I know um, for an experience, uh, for an excitement, I as a manager want to enter in the Olympic ideal of everything, you know. I've been invited by the BOA to various meetings. I've, I've met with uh, Clive Woodward uh, in regard to it. And, and, you know, I want to showcase football within the Olympic ideal. We're entering into their family and I think, uh, you know, th the best we can showcase our profession within this, the better it is for us. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in Euro 96 and the excitement of a, of a major tournament on our own soil generated. And uh, if we get a fraction of that excitement uh, in regard to Team GB, and a lot of that will de uh, depend on results and whatever the results start coming, and then the support will be fantastic. And I'm sure, you know, I'm hoping that we get um, not just football fans come to support the team, but maybe Olympic fans as well. It's another opportunity and a good opportunity for you to learn more about tournament football as well, isn't it? Yeah. Um, from my point of view and all the players and staff's point of view that will be involved, tournament football experience comes around very, very rarely, you know. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's really important that, that everyone takes something away from it. I think all the players will go back to their clubs, having been involved in a tournament here, uh, better for it, I'm sure, you know, as an experience for themselves. It'll be an experience that sticks with them for the rest of their life, you know. I know, you know, their grandchildren will be saying, were you involved in the Olympics when it was in London? If you can say, yes, I was actually an Olympian, I played in the, uh, in the football team that was involved in that, it's a fantastic honour.